In this video I'll be discussing the radiological appearances of a pneumothorax in a supine patient. In the erect patient, because air rises, the pneumothorax is seen in the apex. Sometimes it's difficult to see the lung edge, but you can just see the lung edge here, and then it gets obscured by the rib itself. If you were in any doubt that there was a pneumothorax, just look for absence of lung markings in the pneumothorax itself. This, of course, is in the erect position. This is the same patient as in the last slide. The windows have been altered to try and increase the contrast resolution between the lung and the pneumothorax. Uh, again, you can see the lung edge it becomes visible and then it fades as it becomes obscured by the rib itself. So altering the windows can improve the contrast resolution between the pneumothorax and the lung. Here is another example. The lung edge is uh, a little easier to see. Again, this is in the erect position. And if you are in any doubt, the absence of lung markings in the pneumothorax tells you that there is a pneumothorax. Here is another patient. You can see the lung edge goes right down towards the costophrenic angle. And this is uh, an extensive pneumothorax, again in the erect position. Sometimes by doing an expiratory view, you can accentuate the contrast differences between the lung, which is uh, exhaled, and also the pneumothorax, compared to the rather subtle pneumothorax seen on the inspiratory view. So doing an expiratory film actually increases the contrast resolution between the lung and the pneumothorax. So in the erect position, gas rises and you tend to get the pneumothorax in the apex. In a supine position, the pneumothorax tends to collect at the base, giving the so-called deep sulcus sign. That's where the costophrenic sulcus on the affected side is lower than the normal side. So in the case of a pneumothorax in a supine patient, the gas in the pleural space collects anteriorly at the base, causing this deep costophrenic uh, sulcus. Normally, in the erect position, the gas will collect in the apex, but not in the supine position, because this is the least dependent portion where gas rises. This is a different patient. In the scanogram, obviously the patient's supine, you can see a deep costophrenic sulcus on the right compared to the left suggesting that this patient has a pneumothorax. Here's the pneumothorax collecting anteriorly, causing the deep costophrenic sulcus, which is depicted in this schematic diagram. Here's the pneumothorax, uh, a shallow one at the apex, and as you'll see as we go more quarterly, the pneumothorax is better seen around the lung base. And here it is, collecting at the lung base, giving the so-called deep costophrenic sulcus sign. Here is a patient who was crushed by a motor vehicle He's in a supine position. There is a deep sulcus of pneumothorax in a supine patient. Now clearly you can see the pneumothorax here, but if this was less obvious, it would be the deep sulcus sign that tells you there's a pneumothorax. Note also the patient has a pneumopericardium, pneumomedastinum, and there's increased opacification of the lung parenchyma, which is perhaps due to contusion or maybe neurogenic pulmonary edema if there's a coexisting head injury. Or in the elderly patient, do consider overzealous resuscitation.
This patient uh, was admitted with complete heart block. Here is a temporary pacing wire. And soon after this temporary pacing procedure, the patient developed chest pain. You can see that there's a deep cosophoronic sulcus here compared to that side. And this is a patient with a supine pneumothorax. Now, semi-erect also means semi-supine.